Office Politics for Dummies. Welcome back to another episode of Ethical Machiavelli. Imagine walking into a game of chess where every move is critical, yet you don't know you're a player. In the world of office politics, not playing is not an option. If you choose to stay on the sidelines, be warned. You might just find yourself checkmated and maneuvered out before you even realize a game was going on. Today, we pull back the curtain on what OP is actually about, equipping you with the basics, insights, and further information to strategically thrive in the ever-present maze of office politics. Defining office politics, Harvard Business Review describes it as a relationship currency and influence capital. This encompasses the seen and unseen dynamics in any organization. Jeffrey Pfeffer, in his book, Power, Why Some People Have It and Others Don't, elaborates, power is a force that affects virtually every aspect of human behavior. Understanding this force is crucial in navigating the workplace effectively. The psychology behind office politics. OP is essentially a phenomenon driven by basic human instincts. As Robert Greene states in The 48 Laws of Power, the game of power is inescapable. Humans are wired to seek status and form alliances, a survival mechanism that manifests in modern workplaces as individuals vie for security, status, and glory. You cannot switch this survival mechanism off. That is to say, office games are here to be played, and Daniel Goleman's concept of emotional intelligence further highlights this. This includes, most notably, self-awareness and empathy in managing interpersonal dynamics. The literature on office politics. I have read a fair share of interesting books, but here are three important pieces, at least one of which you most likely already know. Karen Dillon's HBR Guide to Office Politics. Takeaway one, focus on positive, not negative politics, building genuine relationships, being transparent in dealings, and promoting a culture of fairness. Takeaway two, understand your environment. Be observant of unspoken rules and power dynamics. When you just started off a new position, this is even more vital for effective inauguration and navigation within the organization. Oliver James' Office Politics, How to Thrive in a World of Lying, Backstabbing, and Dirty Tricks. Takeaway one, be aware of the darker side of office politics, including manipulative tactics that can undermine personal and professional integrity. Takeaway two, emphasize self-awareness. Understanding your own values and boundaries is key in navigating office politics without losing your ethical standards. Robert B. Cialdini's Influence the Psychology of Persuasion Takeaway 1. Cialdini discusses the psychology behind why people say yes and how to apply these understandings ethically in the workplace. He emphasizes the principles of persuasion such as reciprocation, commitment, social proof, authority, liking, and scarcity. Takeaway two, understanding these principles can be crucial in navigating office politics. By recognizing these tactics in others and using them judiciously and ethically, you can effectively influence and navigate complex workplace dynamics. Positive versus negative office politics. Now we touched upon positive politics. As Adam Grant points out in Give and Take, why helping others drives our success, positive politics involves a giving approach fostering collaboration and trust. By contrast, negative politics often involve taking behaviors marked by self-interest and unethical actions. Simon Sinek in Leaders Eat Last emphasizes that leaders set the tone for organizational culture where either constructive or destructive political behaviors can flourish. Remember the saying, the fish stinks from the head. The top management team's behavior is vital in influencing company culture by far the most important lever. Navigating office politics. Navigating OP with skill and integrity then involves a blend of emotional intelligence, strategic thinking, and ethical behavior. As Sun Tzu stated in The Art of War, know yourself and know your enemy, and you will always be victorious. In the context of office politics, this translates to understanding both your personal values and the dynamics of your workplace, building relationships, Effective communication and adaptability are crucial. As Stephen R. Covey writes in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, seek first to understand, then to be understood. This principle is vital in successfully navigating the complex waters of office politics. 
Watch our other videos for more in-depth insights and practical tips. In conclusion, mastering OP is not about manipulation or deceit. Remember, we are ethical Machiavellians. Mastering OP is about understanding the complex interplay of human relationships in an organizational setting and leveraging it to your advantage. Figure out who has formal power and who has informal power. Who has an ear with the powerful people in your organization? Who do you think appears to be a backstabber? Map the power landscape. Identify the players. We have another video on this topic. Use all that knowledge. And if you're new to a place, well, take your time to map out the terrain and its players. Remember to make your moves with foresight and integrity, like an ethical Machiavellian does. Thanks for joining on this episode of OP Today. Don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth looks into professional life. Share your thoughts and experiences with us in the comments below.